master. There it is. Yeah, master. Yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's go ahead and get this going. All right. Um. Oops. What happened there? So, as we get getting everything up right now. So what what have you worked on the last day or so? I've been trying to uh, do the portfolio section, but I oh. wrote some code and then I broke my shit. So. <laughs> so. Do you want to work together on it today? Or would you like to continue doing what we're doing? I'll, I'll leave it up to you. What's tomorrow, Thursday? Tomorrow, Thursday. You got two days. If not, I'm going to shame you. <laughs> so, um, what what would you like to do? Would you like to... Hi, David. Today's Wednesday, so... Hi, James. Hi, Joshua. We'll say, we'll continue with what we're doing, and then tomorrow, if you haven't made progress, because that's, that's like the last day before homework is due, all right? I'll help you. Okay. Or do you want to do it today? It's up to you. I'm going to do it. I want to finish it. I don't really want your help. Okay. Alright, so we'll continue on what we were doing today, which was going over the HTML library. Um, I believe we were on layouts. So, ha has this been helpful so far? You're lear learning that things exist? Because that was the idea. No, it's very helpful. Okay. Alright, good. Um... And you see me, even there's some things in here, I'm like, wow, oh, shit, I didn't know about this ancient piece of shit. And so, um, it's pretty common. All right. Hey, Juan. Hi, Godless Monkey. Alright, so, I, we were on layout. Alright. What are you doing? I don't know, but you need to take it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> no. Is that better? Okay, how do, okay, we have it all on you. You probably get us better fucking reviews. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so <coughs> remember we talked. You were asking, hey, how do I name certain things? Um, or like, what's good naming convention? Well, <clears throat> there used to come a time where you would start, <coughs> excuse me, you would start, um, like, your header would be, like, your header image. And you see this image here? This breaks it down pretty pretty good. good. But now there's actually these tags that help you kind of define what it is you're trying to do. Now, you're still going to have to have name your class names and your, and, and your headers, but you have these tags, which are kind of like divs to a degree. Um, but they're just... Like your nav tag would be for your navigation, your header. You would use that as kind of your your container. Hmm. Your header image, a side footer. So I mean the ones that you really need to know. Uh Godless Monkey, we will talk about off topic things like if I find people from East Coast more rude or that not than the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 I when I read that, I was like, wow, that is. <laughs> Alright, so what we're doing here. Um, the, so, the, how would you go about using like the section tag or the. Do they have closing tags or it's just. A yeah, they, tag? Have they have closing tags. Oh, okay. All of these are containers. So, in order for a container, they have to have an opening and closing tag. So, you don't need to use divs, you can use section. Um, you could, uh, but like header refers to a header of a document or, uh, nav refers to the navigation, uh, section defines a section in a document. I wouldn't use that. Article is independent self-contained article. A side is usually for something like a sidebar, as you can see right here. Um, details, summary, uh, uh, basically the ones that you're going to use are header, nav, and footer most of the time. Because you know how every page typically has a navigation? And every page has a footer. And so now um, in HTML5, 
they've kind of predefined these layouts to help these containers to help with that. Hmm. Can I see an example of those? We saw one yesterday when we were looking at the code pin. That remember how it said foot? It was like by uh, Dennis White in the footer or something like that. He used a footer uh, c c div there. Oh, uh, okay. For the time being, you can think of them as divs that are just specific tags. Okay. Instead of being called div classes equal to footer, um, you just have a footer element that does something similar. All right, so I don't know that I want to go. Hmm, do we want to go into responsive web design? This might be a little. I think this might be a little advanced. Um, yes, we're. We're gonna go we're gonna skip responsive web design just for now. Did we go over blocks classes iframes? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Pass, yeah. Yeah, we're on, we're on layout. Oh. Computer code. I don't understand what this is. <laughs> the KBD for keyboard represents the user input like a keyboard input or voice command. Hey, Will. So let's see this. Ah, this is cool. I didn't know this. So if we wanted to, one way that uh, we can say, hey, the user can, if they hold control S. Now, this isn't going to do anything. Um, well, this is going to, because we're on a page, it'll say something. But I'm saying in our code, it doesn't actually do anything. The browser does something. But one way that we can see how the font's a little bit different uh, this is another tag to... We got a free code camp meetup. Good, man. Meetups are probably one of the best ways for you guys to network, so I'm glad We're you We're going did. to one tomorrow. We are going to an Angular 2 meetup at a um, coding boot camp called The Iron Yard that hosts them regularly in the St. Petersburg area. It's tomorrow, right? It's tomorrow. It's at 6.30. Um, okay. So, uh, this is to denote... This is basically giving context. It's going to change it as well, but it's basically user input. We can use the KBD key for a keyboard input KBD. What does it do? It just it it changes the way that it looks. Mm. That's basically it. It also provides context. Imagine again. Imagine imagine that someone's blind and they need context for everything there are tags that will do that and this is one of them and there there may be seo purposes to do something like this um so samp would be an example of the opposite instead of user input it would be um computer output user input computer output let's go back um Ryan Richards, are we going off a scheduled output? Uh, so uh, I, I basically have a mental note about three to four days ahead of where we're trying to go, and I kind of base in it off for pace. So today we are going to continue going over the HTML5 of W3Schools. She's already been working with HTML, but there's a lot that she probably hasn't discovered on her own, and we're going through it right now to kind of just, hey, this exists. When you're working on your projects, remember that you need to go find this. And we're going to, uh, right now she's finishing up the portfolio on Free Code Camp. We've gone over the JavaScript section to kind of introduce her to that. She's doing that on her own. But by Friday, I hope that she is done with the portfolio. And then Saturday, or Friday, so Friday she's done. Friday's lesson will be me refactoring it. And then she'll go and do it on her own. Saturday, we will actually take her out of the out of CodePen and she will be exclusively working in a text editor, at which point I will teach her Git and we'll start to do uh, commits and things like that as well. And after that, we will uh, continue on the JavaScript path of W3Schools while she's finishing up the JavaScript notes she's doing on Free Code Kit. And she'll be on the algorithm section, which will be an interesting thing because I don't know how well that's going to go at this time. But um, anyhow, so- Neither of us do. So remember, <laughs> remember how we were console logging? Yeah. Um, that would be an example of computer output. The computer is outputting that. Any text editor in specific? I will be starting her off with Visual Basic, uh, Visual Studio Code, or Atom. I'm going to give her options, but my my personal favorite is Visual Studio Code, so that's probably what I'm going to start her out with. 
Okay, so there's also this code block. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support from all y'all. It's very, very, very appreciated. In fact, when I'm struggling, I just think of everyone and saying all the nice things that you guys do. It helps me stay confident in myself, so I appreciate it. Thank you. So this code tag defines, uh, it, it'll just slightly change what it's looking like, but basically defi just defines that, hey, this is code. It doesn't actually run anything. It's just defining that this is containing code. Um, uh, you can do the same thing with var uh, if for a variable e is equal to mc squared. And no, notice and notice how it's getting combined, right? We're kind of combining our HTML. Where hey, this is a variable. This is a variable, which is what you know, what's styled. And then remember um, superscript. That's how we got the, the two up there. We already, we already touched on that a little bit. All right, HTML entities. Um, so, does it give us an example? No, all right. Um, These sometimes you have to put in special entity names for your browser, um, like at quotations. It, you don't really have to worry about this stuff. When we when we get farther into advanced JavaScript, there's going to be something that takes care of this for us. Uh, it's it's called um, str string literation. Uh, string literation. String alliteration JavaScript. Yes, six. I, I'm I'm forgetting the name of the term. Hey, let's go. So let me show Stop. you. Uh, so, yes, right here is how we'll do things. Okay, uh, it is string interpolation and multiplying string literals. That's what I was looking for in raw string literals. Um, you don't need to worry about that right now. But the point is, is that sometimes you have to put out your text in certain ways in JavaScript hmm. uh, to get like an at sign or a greater than sign or a less than sign so it doesn't interpret it as HTML tag. Oh, and okay. so one way that you're able to do that is by putting this in to your code. Yeah, like the slashes to... Yeah, similar to that. Okay. Um, symbols. Let's check this out. So there's also that for specific symbols which is kind of how um, like icons work to a degree. So see, at Euro, you gotta look these up. No one has these, maybe you get the Euro sign. And, and there's a ton, right? So if you wanted the for, I guess that's for all, pair, um, partial difference, uh, an array, uh, an array summation, all those sort of stuff, as well as Greek letters and um, other entities. So you have the C sign, copyright, um, number, all, all this sort of stuff. Chart set. Uh, you don't really need to worry too much about this. Uh, URL and code. Let's check this out real quick. Yeah, this is more nonsense. All right. Um, you don't really work with XHTML anymore, so we're we're not gonna. What is that? It's just another type of HTML. Um, let's see if there's anything that you need to be aware of. Okay, so forms. This is super important. So forms are going to be a little tricky because they're they're not like anything else because they involve JavaScript at the end of the day when when you actually want to use them in a real world setting. So uh, Devo boy MLG bro, welcome man, welcome welcome. So <coughs> so uh, forms are 
Form tags are what you use when you want to submit data. <gasps> this is perfect. I want to do this for my contact. I know, but um, you have to have a back end and a database for it to go anywhere, so it's not going to work. You can set it up so it looks like it works, but it's not actually going to do anything. But it's just as good um, to get started. So let's take, let's look at an example here. We have our form tag, and notice we have a closing and opening tag, and everything that we want to submit is within it, right? It's like a div. It's only valid what's contained within it. Just like, you know how in JavaScript we have a scope, a local scope? Same concept. Compile. Um, so here you'll see that we have an input. Remember, input is nothing. I'm back. <laughs> uh, is nothing but a drop down and this type in or a, a uh, input an input is one way of putting in something depending on what type you have type text is a box like this all right there's uh, numerous other types and we're gonna get into that in a minute so we have name is equal to first name this is what this this is name is don't get not to be confused with class or ID this is basically just naming the value of this. So if I say first name, we know it's this input. So uh, the value you'll see is Mickey. That's what it is. Now this can change, but we can also set a default value. So if I set this to Dylan and I ran my code, the default value here would be Dylan. That's all we're doing is setting default value. Oh, okay. And if I put Dylan123, it, it's not going to show in your HTML like this, but the value here is Dylan123. All right. And so the value is what we're storing, and same same thing here, that, except this one's last name. And uh, what's happening is we're having another input type is equal to submit and value submit. And so that basically creates an input that's a button. And when we click, hit submit, you'll see the action saying, okay, the value submit, in that case, what's the form's action? Submit means, hey, we're done, do the, the action of the form. All right. And in this case, it says, hey, go run this action underscore page dot PHP, which it goes and sends the data somewhere. It's all PHP logic. Um, make, make sense about the, the general logistics of forms? Yeah. So you have, you have your inputs. These could be drop downs. These could be anything else. Um, and then you have uh, input, uh, you have a submit, which runs the action form but all has to be nested within the form tag to do that okay. all right otherwise the submit doesn't know what action to use cool so let's uh we talked about the format elements the input elements so there's a couple different ones and um as you use other libraries these may be different but input type text that was the one we were looking at where was it text and then there's radio, which is like a radio button. Yeah, I've, I've seen all of these, yeah. And then submit. And let's see, we already talked about that. Showed that, radio button input. So let's see here. And you'll notice, so the thing that differentiates, um, the, way, the way that radio buttons know that they need to work together is you give them all the same name. And so you'll see here, we can only have one of these radios selected at a time. And you can, if you want to have a default value, uh, the way that you can do it is put checked in it to start. And so you'll see the value here is male, female, or other. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily correspond. A lot of times what it will correspond with is an ID in a database. So it might be a one, a two, or a three, or something like that. But the way, if we were to actually change this to Dylan, for instance, we would actually be able to have two of these checked because they're not in the same group they're not in the same name uh, but we can only have one of these two selected cool. all right and so this check just basically marks it as the one that's selected any any questions about the radio buttons mm -mm. okay cool um we've already talked about the submit button uh creates a button submits it it runs the action. All right, the action attribute. Um, you can also put the method in there. Uh, 
this is fucked up that they talk talk about this, but uh, before you get to here, um, let's talk about RESTful APIs. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so RESTful APIs are, and I have a video about this, by the way, so I encourage you to watch it. Um, I've already seen it. You have? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, who hasn't, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> So a RESTful API is, we talked a while back about APIs. Do you remember what they were? It stands for Application Programming Interface. Say something about it, I might remember. YouTube statistics. Vaguely. All right, um, so on my page, on my website that you didn't know existed, when we go, here and we want to see that hey this is my last video uploaded I don't hard code this it pulls it from a database oh yeah I remember and so an API is what does that it's the and so yeah 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 I remember you telling me about the weather thing and you're like oh I'm gonna dig into this API and here yeah and so what that does is there's these to be a restful API there's a git call, which all the git, git does is go and gets data. There's a post, which creates data. There's a put that updates data. And there's a delete that deletes data from the database. Mm -hmm. So that's what a RESTful API is. So uh, the reason we're bringing that up is in this case, sometimes you need to put a method that says, hey, what, th what this PHP action that's getting called, and PHP is a backend, we'll say a, a middleware, it's basically a backend language that does stuff to a server and a database sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, run this, and if the method is a git, put it a git. If it's a create new, put a post. Um, there's also more to it. Um, if you are doing a git call, what is visible in the page address? So there's security things as well. So. Um, you can use either, uh, but Git is not, Git is only when you're retrieving information that it's not sensitive. Post is when it is sensitive. So like if it's a password that's being passed in there, you don't want to use a Git call. When you do a post call, um, well, that's kind of important to know. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about field sets. Field sets are pretty cool. Um, this is a field set that goes around here. So if you, it's kind of like a cool little container. To, to organize your form. And if you want to put this personal information colon in there, you'd use what's called a legend. Like, I am a legend of YouTube. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. No, uh, all right, no, that's a bad joke. Uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> um, but the legend is basically the title of the field set. And you can have as many field sets as you want. Cool. You have a field set within a field set if you wanted to. Um, so if we wanted to do something like this, we do field set slash field set, and maybe we wanted to give it a, a legend slash legend, and we'll just throw a last name in here, and we'll throw an input in here. And we'll run it. And you'll see now we have our, our field set within a field set. <laughs> that's cool. All right. So that's a field set and the legend that goes with it. All right. Um, let's see. Hey, you can also turn autocomplete on. By default, it's on. All right, form elements. All right, so uh, this is more, so far we've only been dealing with radio buttons and um, input boxes. There's also other ways. Uh, TICAM2808, welcome, welcome. All right, um, shout out to our Twitch boys, man. We got a few now that we're live streaming to both, pretty cool. All right, what's happening here? I am running over, we are in a 100 day coding um, challenge where I'm a, I'm a full-time salary developer and my girlfriend is trying to become a developer and she's been studying for now 15 days 
and every day I spend an hour with her going over um, topics, elaborating, refactoring her code, and with the hopes of in 100 days to get her ready to have a portfolio as well as be able to get an internship or a, uh, a, a entry level role of some sort. That is what is going on here. So today we are going over everything on W3 schools that's included in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript piece by piece for the next day or two while she works on other things, which she spends about three hours a day going over it. Uh, that's what's going on. So here, how you create dropdowns is, is pretty straightforward. You have a select tag, and mind you, this is all still in the, in the form, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Boston24, welcome, welcome. All right, so here we have our select tag. Within there, we have the options for the select tag. Okay. And remember the value? This is how what value is being communicated over. So you may not always want the value to be Volvo. It may want to be an ID, which is why we put this in here. Mm. But it needs to have a value. Otherwise, you're selecting something that doesn't have a value. It's just going to be error. Okay. It's not even going to be error. It's going to be null. Um. Now, name cars is where that value is stored, essentially. So here we have Volvo, and and one thing to keep in mind is that they are all fancy cars. But no damn Honda in there. <laughs> <laughs> one thing to keep in mind is that if you want a empty value, you will need to put it in there. There's not like a keyword to do that. So. There are so many empty values. People gotta put that shit in manually. Here, I thought it was automatic. <laughs> nope. Uh, so you have to do that if you want to. Now, it may show up with nothing in it. So you'll see that it not shows up, but once I go and I select something, or let me take it out, I won't be able to go back to it. Oh, actually this one does it, which is strange. Uh, I've been working with a lot of other uh, drop downs that are styled so maybe it has something to do with that but um you have to put a an empty one in there if you want people to be able to use an empty one make sense cool so select and then the options nested in it what's up what <laughs> what, what, what what is that what's going on <laughs> what am i missing <laughs> just feel like i was headed deja vu right there all right, uh, so remember how we had checked for radio? I'm trolling his ass. <laughs> so remember how we had checked for radio to be the one that was selected? Yeah. There's also selected for drop downs if you want one of them to be selected on load. They have Fiat selected. Yes. I feel like, oh, that's the average car. <laughs> well, it could be if it's written in. Um, I think he's talking to you. I know he's talking to me. <laughs> hey, Kevin. <laughs> uh, you know what, Kevin? I'll, I'll have you know that I, uh, your boy's going to an Angular 2 talk tomorrow to step up his front-end game, man. I, I know you'll be proud of that. Uh, anyhow, so text area. We had been dealing with one row in text input. There's a difference between text area and text input. One, by default, you can drag and drop this if you want to. What? And two, uh, it's a larger input, right? So you do that, uh, you do that with text area, with a text area tag. It's not an input tag with type text, it's a text area tag. And then you have rows and columns that if you want to put it in there as well. Hmm. Uh, for how big it should be. I'm not sure what the default size is if you run it. It's just a default whatever. And you can expand and type. And it might even expand. Or I'll do the arrow on it if you want. Drag and drop. But same thing. You've signed a name as well for it. The the button type. Clickable button. Um, this is more... Um, so this, I'll show you a quick... You don't usually see too many alerts anymore. Um, but remember button, uh, button elements. So um, it's usually better to create a button instead of put input. It's just more standard, I would say. Mm. And so you can still put type is equal to button. 
Um, and then on a click is JavaScript. Is, remember the DOM? What does DOM stand for? Dominant. No. Document. DOM? What is the abbreviation for, what does the D-O-M stand for? Document something something. Oh, DOM. Oh. <laughs> Uh, document. I want to say override, but I'm pretty no. sure that's not right. All right. So document object model. And what that means is that we're going to manipulate the document, which is the, the web page. Document. Object model. Object model. Yes. And so on. It doesn't sound on, like that's what you're doing. Well, if you think of if you think of the page as your HTML document, which it is, you do too know what DOM stands for, fucking Kevin. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> all right. So, it might shit. I thought you were saying DOM. I didn't think you were saying. Let me see if I can. It might be. Uh, here we go. Let's yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> so here, let's bring this up real quick. So remember our HTML tags were the root. One level above that is the document, the whole text element. The root system. The document. The uh, base. The source, the if stuff. you will. Uh, the base code, yeah. All right, my love. The mud. The All dirt. Right. It's the dirt. All right. Enough with this. All right. So the DOM, when you talk about manipulating the DOM, what document. that... Document. Yes. When you're talking about manipulating... Wait, wait, wait. Document. What is it? Object model. Object model. Document. Object model. Okay. So what we're talking about is manipulating static data, ma manipulating static data on our document, on the web page. Okay. Fucking Milo triggered this. Okay. And so, um, now that we've discussed that, this on click, remember, is um, what they call HTML JavaScript. Meaning, hey, sometimes we can put things in here that will run certain things of JavaScript. So on click, it's going to call an alert box, which is it, this. And what's it going to say is hello world. <laughs> so JavaScript has this function built in called alert that will pass take um, that will take that string and tell you it. I said that yesterday and I got yelled at for not keeping the channel PG. <laughs> so keep it down. <laughs> Yo, man, the, those they're demonetizing videos out there, man. We ain't got time for that. I don't make any money on this channel as it is. I got <laughs> anyhow. Um, but so this alert is a JavaScript function, and when we set up this on click, what we're doing is DOM manipulation, which is we're altering we're all document object model manipulation. What's happening is we're altering how the page functions, and it's going from static to dynamic. To dynamic. Oh, I thought it was going to be responsive. Now, responsive is just changing of CSS classes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Here, we're actually using some JavaScript. Milo, get the fuck out of here. Stop it. Go lay down. Uh... Is right, we're just calling it straight JavaScript, but this is still working with the DOM. It's not necessarily manipulating it if we want to get technical. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> you get the point though that you can work with the page to do things. Yeah, okay, so that's all this. 
Oh, Another no. form. Input list browsers. Data list. The data list oh. element specifies a list of pre. Uh, Ryan Hare, in about 15 minutes, we're going to be taking uh, questions uh, at the end of the lesson. So uh, just hold off, man. I'd, I'd be happy to answer that question. So input list browsers, option value. Oh. This is another way of doing just another way of doing drop downs. Input list, browsers, data list, ID browsers. Mm. So it's kind of like a combination. Okay, so data list is kind of like a combination between a search and a drop down. So what's going to happen here? And oh, it's, oh, so like as you're typing, it's going to try and guess what it is that you're typing. Um, yeah. So here you'll see we have our input <laughs> list is browsers, name is browser, and then the ID here needs to match the list. Okay. And then we have a data list as a container, and then we put in the options for it. And wow, that's a lot of writing. Yeah, so, but you'll see here, it's not very- Is there very something that does that automatically? So you don't have to manually input everything or do you actually manually input everything? So what's gonna happen is down the road, you'll have, re remember the array? What's the yeah. array again? Mm -hmm. The list of stuff. Y yes, so say we have an array, say we have a hundred options in, in an array. What we would do is we would use a JavaScript framework to actually just print out, we would put essentially a for loop in a single t line <gasps> Could and it you would do, do it for us. Oh, okay. But we have to set that up. Yeah. Could you also set up with an array where you like, let's say you put all these options in, someone types an option that's not in there, then instead of saying that that was an option, you could use that as a new input? Yes, but yes. all that, none of that is necessarily, you, I mean, you will be using HTML, but Everything you're talking about is more JavaScript and like yeah yeah database. I know I was just wondering if it was possible. So. Okay, so hey, the Fast and Furious reference totally like that's where my mind went to the first time you said I was like Dom, all that came to mind was Fast. <laughs> okay, so so essentially the data list is a drop down in, with a search. Right. Okay, and and um, just keep in mind that you have to have an input. The list has to match the ID, and that uh, it, since we're only using HTML, you'd have to put in all the options. Okay. What the hell is a key gen? Uh, so the purpose of the key gen element is to provide a secure way to authenticate users. It sounds like fermented seaweed. Uh, key gen is for it. Hmm. All right. Hey. So key, key gen is used to, it's a security feature that creates a public and a private uh, key gen so that one one is local that's okay to be viewed for the time being and one goes pub one goes into the database which will actually be your certificate um, I've never seen this and I've never seen it used I've never used it I've never seen it um, so I, I can't really say too much about it okay so Uh, the output element represents the result of a calculation. All right, so this is more with more HTML at ish JavaScript. 
Now, you usually wouldn't do something like this, but you'd actually probably use a framework to do something like this, but I guess in theory you could do it this way. Um, you still have a button that submits. Uh, so you have this output, which is name x, and what we're saying is x dot value. This dot value comes from the name is almost like variable. You, you got that at this point in HTML. As close as we're going to get. So we're saying, hey, the value is if we take these, or what's parse int do again? It turns a string into an int, right? Oh, man, yeah. That's JavaScript. And we're saying, hey, get the, the a, turn that into an int, a dot value, what's a? Name here is a, and the value is 50, right? So we're saying, hey, turn that, which is string 50, into number 50, and turn this uh, 50 into, or string 50 into number 50. And when we hit submit, go ahead and return that value. Um, this is this is running this action, but this is where it would output that. Uh, you won't. I'd be very surprised if you ever use this. Uh, so don't don't sweat that. There's there's other ways that you're going to be doing that. Let's see if there's anything we miss. Defines the result of a calculation. Cool input types. All right. <coughs> so our, we already talked about the input type text which is the, in, the the text input, right? The little row. This right here. Right? Yeah. All right. Um, there's also input type password, which is blocks your characters. I hate those things. Um, so that type is equal to password. OK. Let's see what else is there. There is, we talked about submit, text, text. Um, this submits your form action or runs your form action with the data that you have and your name values here need to be what's in the back end otherwise it doesn't know what to do with it hmm. right um, nothing you need to worry about now but just keep in, keep in mind and there is a input type reset so this type reset There we go. We'll reset to the default value. Hmm. So whatever these values uh, within the form, at, within the form, right? So whatever the value change, it's going to reset it as if no one ever input anything. Right. In this case, it was Mickey and Mouse because that was always the value. Right. Why are they putting values in there? Just to give an example. So it, uh, you probably normally wouldn't, but... Um, in this case, it's just an example. I, to show that you could, I guess. Okay. So it resets another type as well. Um, all right, we already talked about checked and radio buttons. There's also check box. Now, what's the difference between a radio button and a check box? One is like a list and a radio button is... Man, I know this. I learned it in Code Academy. One, you can check as many as you need to. And Which is, wait, wait, don't be cheating. Checkbox, you can check as many as you want. I just said that. How is that cheating? You said one. You didn't specify. Uh, but you can also mark, if you want to mark, mark it as checked on load, you can as well. And you can do it for both of them. OK. So we've talked about the type on button. We've also uh, type button defines a button. You probably will just use button. <laughs> <laughs> Let's still throw a type is equal to button on it though. Um, type color. I haven't seen this one. So there's an input. So you could do this for some. I have no. I don't know. I've seen this boy. I haven't seen one of those like unless I was like six. Um, I mean, uh, that's such a flashback. <laughs> uh, there's also type date. 
Oh yeah. I hate that shit. It's so annoying. Type that D. Yeah, I hate that. Oh. Okay. Um Sorry guys, been filling out a lot of resume applications and they're all put the date, put the date. It's like, God damn it. So you can also on the date type um, put a max date or a min date if you don't want a date to go before a certain point. Mm -hmm. I don't like that either. There's a lot of those in there. Date time local, which means that you're going to select a date and then you're going to select a time as well. Apparently not. <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, there you go. And then you'd send it. Um, more than likely, you're probably going to use a third party CSS thing like Angular Material or some sort of. You're not going to use a generic one that's built into HTML most of the time. Uh, input type email, that's another important one. You have an email. Um, some of these things. Uh, will not work in IE9 or below because What's IE9? Internet Explorer. Oh yeah, that's what I Because it fucking sucks, big donkey dick. Um, PG. Yeah. Let's keep it PG. So you can also do month. If you do month, we'll do month and year. Not a big deal. Oh. Input type number. Uh, you can have a max number and a min number. This is like a uh, like this. A little clicker. What's Internet Explorer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what it is. There's a meme out there that says Internet Explorer runs faster than the government. There you go. This is Internet Explorer. Little joke. <laughs> you installed Chrome. <laughs> That's what an explorer is for. Anyhow, um, okay. So we talked about input types. We're gonna dive a little bit more into input attributes. Um, name and value. We already talked about those. What is the difference between name and what's name and what's value? Name is, I thought uh, name was a type of variable. Sort of, yeah. Name holds the value. So if value is on the right side, name is on the left side. So if we, when we send our form and it checks first, it's looking for first name, the value of it would be John here. Ah. Uh. So they're kind of related. Name stores the value. All right. The read-only attribute, this is another one. Uh, so this is an attribute you can throw on an input field where you see how I'm trying to input it into here, but it's not. It's because it's read-only. You only get to see. You don't get to touch. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so no touchy. Yeah. Uh, disabled is another one uh, where it'll, you can't enter anything. It's disabled. All right. It's just what are you fucking going on? So size, uh, you can. She's done. <laughs> you can make it. Uh, you can make it longer if you want. Yeah, you can. Can you make it longer? <laughs> Not that it needs to be any longer. All right. She laughing over here. <laughs> All right, we're almost. Uh, all right, we'll finish this. Uh, oh, you know what? This is a, there's a lot going on here. You just started that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, did we even finish input types? Yeah, we did. Uh, let me see. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, I we do. Did. Oh, we didn't. Shit. Oh, that's why I was like. All right, all right. Let's like... let's come back to this because I, I we're at our 15 minute mark and I my mind's kind of jelly right now. 
Um, so let's stand up. We had some questions er, uh, that we weren't able to dive into. Florida people, are they nice or sweet? I mean, or evil? I, I'll tell you right now, I've had better interactions with uh, people in Florida than I have in L.A. Um, I've lived in L.A. my entire life, so uh, up until the last six, seven, eight months of it now. Um, and I would, uh, I would never go back to L.A. unless they doubled to triple my salary. So <laughs> that would be what it is for various reasons. Um, what does PG stand for? Parental guardian, uh, guidance. Something. Um, somebody asked an actual real question. Yeah, it was the... Uh... I don't want to answer it if he's not here. You got to say you're here. Or I'm not answering it. <laughs> It was a legit question. Let's see the portfolio progress. That's a good question. No. I broke it. So I took all the code out. And I'm going to redo it. Milo, no. Milo! Come here, Bubba. Come here. Yeah, I'm here. All right. On, Ryan's here. I'll answer the question. What was the question? Uh, I want to practice web development, uh, but haven't had any ideas lately. What should I make? Well, if you're haven't already they have a bunch of projects on free code camp this is uh for front end if you're just looking for projects for projects are always great um now there it depends on what your skill set is also how, how advanced you are my thing is uh my thing is that um uh so you can see there's intermediate ones weather machine random quote machine there's advanced ones as well and then there's uh there's uh data visualization react projects uh d3 projects back-end projects and if you finish all those there are ones on the beta that you can uh, aspire to lots of great ideas so there's about tw i think 25 projects on free code camp and there's another there's new ones all on the beta as well um now my, my advice to you is to build something that you think can make you some money and that you're passionate about. Because I promise you, uh, it'll, that's much better than building a calculator or anything like that. How do I get rid of that page scrubber on Visual Studio? I Googled it and found porn scrubber. Definitely not what I require at the moment. I don't know, man. I do not know. Or Milo. Is that, he's, Milo's putting on some weight. He's so heavy. Milo's been putting on his summer weight right now. He's <laughs> a little confused. That you're only supposed to put it on for winter, buddy. Uh, so I've made a solution for most of the projects on Free Code Camp, but the code seems really messy. Any tips on keeping everything neat? My advice is go back and refactor your code if you can't understand it after spending about an hour or two you should rewrite the whole project you'll learn a lot in the process of seeing how your improvement is go start with the easiest or the earlier ones and see where you can make improvements not only in efficiency but in just eliminating code um, same thing with your html and css see if you can eliminate some of it and you'll become a much better developer in the process refactoring code is really important and something that I do regularly uh, with my coworkers sometimes. And I, they do it for me as well, I'm sure. Um, but uh, that'd be one of the ways of going about it. It's just rebuilding it. And uh, see, and same thing with the algorithms, right? As you have progressed, you've gotten better. Whether you realize it or not, you may go back and look at your code and be like, Jesus. <laughs> What sort of uh, what sort of uh, ape or monkey wrote this? Um, so he says, with your finger been healing pretty well, which it is. You can see there's still a. Uh, let's see, my wrist is a little bit pink, but that's pretty good. And then my finger is scabby, but it's getting better. Um, with the finger healing up pretty well, and the time set aside for April and work. What have you been working on for the next build? Uh, so. I've talked about this a little bit. I'm actually going to launch a company um, and a product. Uh, I haven't been putting too much time into it quite yet. I'm still figuring out the financial details of it. Um, but I will be launching uh, what I'm calling Coder's Crate, 
which essentially is loot crate for, for uh, people who are passionate about coding. That is the gist of it. Um, if you're familiar with Loot Crate, it is a monthly subscription box that you get. Uh, they have various things now, but originally it just started off with a geek or gaming apparel or um, memorabilia. And mine is going to be uh, somewhat similar, except it'll be every every crate you get it will have a shirt. It will have a course. It will have additional educational materials uh, as well. Maybe uh, flashcards. How to explain what you do to other people. What? Yeah, it's going to be a little pamphlet. Have the Q&A on how to get people to understand what the hell you talk about. Yeah, fidget spinners. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that that is that is my current project. Uh, so you may not be seeing too many um, too many coding videos right now. Um, I I have uh, gone towards a uh, one day I want to be a self. Gone towards the light, boys. Yeah. I uh, one day I want to be self-employed, guys. And so one night I I, I uh, occasionally will chase ideas. And this is an idea that I, I think I could be successful in. So that is my next big project, my next big build, if you will. Um, I am also working on um, finishing up. Uh, now that I've I uh, before I heard I uh, yeah jar <laughs> yeah no more jar openers. Uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> But I am also going to uh, be working on a course for eventually. For the uh, founder of Coder's Crate and put jar openers there and a picture of his finger and be like, don't let this happen to you. <laughs> Protect your fingers. But that is what I am working on right now, guys. Um, I don't have too much time with everything so I'm mainly working on the details of it on the weekends during the weekdays between work and tutoring April and YouTube um, hang on time <laughs> so so I wait till the weekend and that's when I am working out the details right now uh, the hardest thing because I, I know what I want to put in the crate I am I um, I know what I am going, how I'm going to pay for it. I know I have all that figured out. I just have to figure out the cost. Uh, Where did you hear that stuff? So over your lifetime, how many hours would you say that you have spent coding? Have you heard that it takes 10,000 hours to master? Something, how long would it, do you think it would take to master a stack? So um, that's an old stat saying it takes 10 hours to master a skill. 10,000 hours to master a skill. That's, that's like an old saying. It's not really a stat. Uh, I don't think that's true. Um, I think a thousand hours into a mean stack, you can master it. That's what I think. It also depends on how you learn. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It, it, for me, this is the thing about mastery. I don't think as a web developer you should strive for mastery because I don't think it's ever you're ever going to get to the point where if you've been spending all your time trying to master something, chances are it's probably already outdated. But, yeah, exactly. Um, so to learn a... If I was to give a rough estimate... Uh, let's go off what April's spending her time doing. I'm spending one hour a day with her, and she is spending two to three, sometimes four. Let's say she averages, uh, we'll say she averages three hours a day on her own. So every day she's spending four hours. I'm expecting her in 100 days to have spent 400 hours. My expectation for her is to land a internship at 400 hours. And I would consider that a success. So at a thousand hours, I would consider, which for her, at a thousand hours, forty hours a week, uh, she would probably be ready for a junior role. Which if she's spending forty hours a week, that's one hundred and sixty hours a month. Is that right? Yeah, one hundred sixty hours a month. So she would basically need four months of employment as an intern, and three months of self-taught. So seven months of spending basically uh, full-time doing something uh, to be a junior dev, which is pretty pretty okay, I think, to, for an entry-level role. Um, but that that's my goal. And also, not everyone has a developer living in the house to explain these things. So, um... Woo! I know you are. I feel like you got money on me. <laughs> Is 
I got a little side bet going on that we don't know about. So I got this monkey, bought me the book. He's like, I got money on April. <laughs> What's been the biggest challenge for me or for April? No, oh, the biggest challenge for you. That's an interesting question. Let's see if he answers this honestly. For me? Um, He's been fibbing lately, so we'll see. Um, the hardest part for me is spending my time not on myself. So, <laughs> uh, what and what I mean by that is I. It's I'm, worse. <laughs> now, the, what I mean, what I mean by that is that I just talked to you about something I'm pretty passionate about, and I want to be working on Coder's Crate, and I want to be working on um, my uh, my JavaScript course and my courses and YouTube and things like that. And I'm happy to spend the time doing it, but at the same time, I feel like I am not getting as much progress. As I can, and, and this is not this is nothing new. This is nothing new, but but I'm aware that I want to be a certain place, and I'm happy to do it. He but, would still say this even if he was working on the stuff. He would just be like, "I'm not working fast enough. I don't feel like I'm going anywhere fast enough." Yeah, it, and it's uh, like it may I, I may have I may have said it a little too bluntly, as in like, "Oh, that's just how he is. He says everything so bluntly." Yeah, I may have said so. Don't don't take it in the like. Oh, I can't stand tutoring in April. No, it, it's just that I I. It's hard for me to get fifteen minutes of pure attention from him. So like this one hour must just be killing him inside. <laughs> like I don't know. I'm always working on stuff, guys, and and I'm used to only working on my stuff. And now I've I've committed a hundred days, and I'm happy to do it. But it's strange because. I usually, I part of the reason that I'm not working on it is by the time that this hour, because I usually would spend an hour to two hours on my own stuff, depending on how tired I am. By the time I'm there, I'm exhausted of this. It's, it's, a, it's mentally draining going through an hour of code, explaining piece by piece, analyzing it. Because I'm usually going pretty fast because I, I'm reading it as fast as I can. I want to cover as much as we can because we only have 100 days. And I want to just just throw it at the wall and hope that she gets it on her own time as well so um but that that's what i mean is that i i i have things i want to work on oh your, your turn baby uh so the biggest challenge for me for 100 days is actually being <coughs> in front of you guys um just because i know it doesn't look like it or maybe it does i don't know I I I like to think of myself as an introvert, even though I'm loud. It's like uh, I'm not like your classic introvert. I I can function in front of crowds and I can speak to huge groups of people. It's just that I recuperate, you know, being in my own space, and I don't always want to interact with people. You know, it's so for me having that dedication to see it in front of the camera every day <coughs> you know regardless of how i feel that's a hard part for me like mentally being like <sighs> okay i just gotta get through this one hour that's it just one hour you know um and then being tutored by dylan um is probably knowing in the back of my head that he may be wanting to do other things and he, i may not be able to reach his exact uh, ideals of where he wants me to be so it's maybe not accomplishing what he wants me or falling below that and that kind of just like would be a bummer um, but at the same time I feel like I'm putting my 100% in but he may have different standards of what my 100% looks like so trying to meet those that would be like my biggest challenge for that. What language are you learning? We're learning the mean stack. So right now, uh, she's going to start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we're going to expand to frameworks and databases down the road, as well as version control testing, all that sort of stuff. And uh, you guys can see kind of a snippet of everything that we're going to cover in my course, I would say, at the end of it. Um, That's exactly it, Ryan. That was the terminology I was going for. 
All right, guys. So uh, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for showing up, asking questions. I do think questions are beneficial uh, for April and for myself. Um, just learn about new stuff all the time. Uh, but don't forget to join the Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. The link is in the description. And uh, support me on Patreon if you're able to. That's always dope. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're only in, what is today, day 16? Day 16, I think. Day 16. Some, some people said, there's someone saying by day 23 we're not making it. There's some, what? I, I don't know who said that in the comments. But uh, I read that. I hope you guys know I read every fucking comment on videos. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I promise you, we will make unless one of us is dead or dying. <laughs> we will be, be like, here with the with the blanket over and the sniffles. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll have the mask on. I have like the the, the oxygen mask on. I'll be like, okay, a bully and. <laughs> Are we going back and forth? <laughs> yeah. Nah, 99 will be the last day. 99 and a half because we'll just be killing each other. So, uh, but uh, I also want, part of this is I, I want to send a message to all those people who say, hey, I can't commit to an hour a day to learn to code. Here we are. Every day, jump on. Put us on. We're, we're here for an hour. Yeah. You got some study partners. Maybe, you know, maybe obnoxious ones like the ones in the library. We were like, shh, motherfucker, I'll kill you. <laughs> we're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No more, no more jars. So I'll be all right. Um, yeah, his his very delicate fingers will be well taken care of. <laughs> all right, baby. You wanna you wanna you wanna uh, let us out of here with your your very. It 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 hurts me every time you say it. Like I'm uncomfortable. Just right? cringe. Yeah, it is pretty cringy. But if you that's what you. That's what you want. I think it's great. You know? Yeah. I, you know, we're going to have to agree to disagree on this one, baby. Um, all right. So. It's like the toast to health, wealth, and happiness. That's cringy, but it's good. Yes. Whatever. He doesn't know nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Code long and prosper, guys. Bye.